We are here to bring a new type of news show. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We're News Generation. Bring news just for you. It's Wednesday, August 14th here in Seoul. I'm Song Jin, and you're watching News Generation. Today, we're joined by Cheska Dian Hong. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Happy Hump Day. Yay! <laughs> and Kiki. Happy Hump Day. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> now, both of you are going to speak on behalf of those in their 20s and 30s. Now, as always, we're going to start with our news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending online. The National Museum of Korea's video showcasing its Lee Hong Gun Donation Hall has been named the Red Dot winner. The second highest honor of this year's Red Dot Design Awards Brands and Communication Design Division. This award is one of the world's top three design competitions alongside the IF and IDEA Design Awards. The museum's video features 26 transparent OLED displays by LG Display, which showcase explanations of the artifacts and play animation like videos that blend with them. Moving on, K pop boy group 17, UNESCO's first ever Goodwill Ambassadors for Youth, launched a UNESCO support program for young people on Monday. In a video posted on UNESCO's YouTube channel, the 13-member group introduced the Going Together for Youth Creativity and Wellbeing grant. This initiative will fund 100 selected projects in music, arts, and sports led by individuals aged 18 to 30 from around the world. 17 pledged to donate 1 million US dollars to the program when they were appointed ambassadors in June. Finally, Carbon Plan, a non-profit climate science and analytics organization based in the United States, has predicted that by 2015, extreme heat could make hosting the Summer Olympics a major health risk for athletes and spectators in most cities around the world. This includes states near the Gulf of Mexico, Mediterranean cities, and even some places that have previously hosted the Summer Olympics, such as Beijing, Athens, Atlanta, Tokyo, and Seoul. By 2050, heat stress levels in these areas are forecast to exceed the 82.1 degree limit, the threshold at which experts recommend canceling sports events. This level is determined by a combination of factors factors, heat, humidity, wind speed, sun angle, and cloud cover. Now, the Paris 2024 Summer Olympics, mm -hmm. which concluded um, this week, actually a Sunday local time, it right. also experienced severe weather, con weather conditions throughout the event, right, Key? Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, it came to close on Sunday, and temperature soared up to 95 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is about 35 degrees Celsius. So extreme heat is growing uh, a to be a threat mm. for elite athletes with the cases of heat exhaustion and heat stroke becoming more common. And I recall being in Pyeongchang 2018 being super cold, like minus 20 degrees mm. Celsius. And uh, even the athletes from Sweden or Denmark, from like Eastern European countries, they said it was too cold. Uh, but just last year, some European cities that include London um, and Paris, they went uh, above 40 degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. which is right. pretty hot. And um, uh, not only the athletes, uh, it also concerns uh, the fans who actually okay. go there to watch the game. Uh, just in Korea, too, for the uh, KBO, the Korean Professional Baseball League, mm -hmm. last, uh, last week, some of the fans who were there to watch the game oh, fainted right. out, mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact. So uh, it's definitely concerning. Right. Now, in, in response to these boiling temperatures, some are now actually suggesting we consider changing the timing of the Summer Olympics since the games are currently taking place during the peak heat in the summer. So, Cheska, I want to ask you, are there any precedents for this? Mm. And what's your um, stance on this idea? You know, it's really shocking that even something as official as the Olympics is even considering changing the dates because right. of the global, literally global boiling phase. I mean, it was announced since last year from the United Nations that now we have transitioned from global warming to a literal global boiling phase and an official announcement has been made. And we unfortunately do have a couple of precedents mm -hmm. that have taken place, including the Sydney Olympics as well as the 2016 Rio Olympics that took place in August and the Sydney moving to September and October. So um, Eugene, we discussed this before, but what I'm afraid is that now we won't have the summer and fall distinction mm -hmm. anymore. It would be like extreme summer and then medium summer. Yeah, medium summer and the low summer and then we transition right into the winter. So more important than changing the dates, I think, is that we normalize the weather so we can actually keep the four seasons, four weathers and have the athletes, the audience and the entire world just be in peaceful and happy place when we watch these Olympic games. Mm, right, definitely more efforts needed to really cool down the temperature yes. mm -hmm. and the overheated intense heat this summer. And that was our news feed for this Wednesday. So we're now going to move on to our main discussion of the day by taking a look at the screen. 
Today is my book, known as the last of the three hottest days of the year on Korea's traditional seasonal calendar. As temperatures continue to break records this summer, many people are struggling, with heat-related illnesses on the rise. In response to this intense heat, there's a long-standing tradition in Korea of eating boyangsik, or body-nourishing summer health food on these three hottest days to help cope with the heat. Today, we're going to take a look at the latest trends in Korea's boyangsik culture. Right, so as just shown, today is Mayabok here in Korea. So starting off, for those who might not be familiar with Mayabok Day's Boyangsik tradition, Ki, can you tell us some yes. of the most common dishes that people in Korea have and why? Well, just looking at the screen just makes me, uh, my mouth water, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, mostly cut, uh, mostly, mostly uh, eaten food normally be uh, Samgetang chicken soup or Changogui broiled eel or Heshintang mm. is a new trend that's a stew with the octopus, abalone, oh. uh, beef ribs, or sometimes you would eat something very spicy for your stamina. And in Korea, we have this word saying "eel chul," mm. meaning you win the heat uh, with the heat, right. and uh, uh, to be immune with this hot weather and everything. And after having hot food and sweating it out, we all feel refreshed. And it's not necessarily a superstition or necessarily scientifically proven but you do feel refreshed and uh, charge it up after having these meals mm, right so here in Korea um, on my book or the three book days we tend to have a uh, meat or we normally have meat or fish based uh, hot dishes. Uh, that's kind of like the Mayabok food culture or food tradition here in the country. Now, Chess, I want to ask you, as today is Mayabok, yes. how are you planning to stay <laughs> Mayabok? Are you also planning to have the classic samgyetang, yeah. chicken soup, or are you looking for something else? Oh, you know, I initially did because I really love the samgyetang <laughs> soup because they brew it with the Korean's traditional herbs. Right, and the medicinal herbs. Yeah, and it has a medicinal effect and, you know, it re re really recharges you and there's a chewy rice that is embedded in the process. You seem really excited. I am excited. <laughs> <laughs> but out of curiosity, I wondered if there were vegan or vegetarian options for the people out there to refuel during these hot and exhaustive phases. So as an MZ, I did the Googling and was <laughs> able to find a list of vegetarian recipes for pungna. Oh. And there was actually a lot. Uh, there is a cold noodle with bean paste, kongguksu, oh. we all know of. And there's an interesting thing called chegejang, which is also a menu that is promoted by the Buddhist Korean temple. Mm -hmm that replaces meat with veggies and mushrooms. Inside but, a soup, right? Yes, inside a soup. And it's a bit hot and it's a bit spicy. So as Ki said, it's a yeol mm. We Koreans like to have hot food during the hot summer. So this is something that I actually discovered and would love to try, actually. Mm, yeah. Right. And all the new menus that you've just mentioned, yeah. they are based on a vegetarian diet. Mm. Now, we've discussed this several times on News Gym before, but it's clear that more young people in Korea especially are adopting vegetarian dishes, diets, with many even trying out vegetarian poyangsik, like Cheska mentioned earlier. So I want to ask you guys, what do you think is driving this trend towards vegetarianism? Yeah, because I was really curious until I did the research that we have so many vegetarian pungne mm. recipes that actually replace the very long traditional um, the meat-based recipe. So let's take a look at the screen to see how the numbers have grown in South Korea over the years. Now, according to South Korea's Vegan Union, just between 2008 and 2019, vegan population jumped by 10 times, Ooh, wow. which is huge because since then the number have been consistently growing. And I believe this is a very big change for a, Korea, a country like South Korea, where the diet restriction or selection is really not part of our traditional culture. We're, we are definitely vegetarian-based, but we do add a lot of meat to our, our you know staple diet so I think it definitely has more to do with our generation's characteristic of trying to be conscientious of our choices and purchase and usually we discuss a couple of times here about the concept of like meaning out or conscious consumption and I think MZers definitely prioritize environment health and animal rights and I think practicing vegan or vegetarian diet fulfills all of these missions and criteria all at once mm. and of course social media plays a big part people post a lot about the importance of eating something and or or the deliciousness of eating <laughs> something so I think that plays a part in it as well mm, right so these are some of the reasons why the younger generation in Korea are gearing towards vegetarianism now as part of this generation key do you also agree that vegetarianism is gaining traction here in the country 
Exactly. I mean, social media plays a obvious bigger role because it makes me guilty when I eat a lot of meat. <laughs> but um, also, plant-based meat and uh, vegan brands are rising as well. Yes. Uh, according to Korea Agro Fisheries and Trade Trade Courts, uh, the scale of plants based meat industry was $17.4 million in 2020, uh, which was 23.7% increase from year 2016. And they forecast about 5.6% of growth every single year. And we expect the market be at $22.6 million, mm. uh, dollars, a 29.7% increase at year 2025. And all the major food uh, brand in Korea, such as CJ, Nongshim, Otugi, they all have a sub-brand just for the vegan mm -hmm. diet. So saying that it's capture, try to capture all the uh, those MZers who try to eat healthy. Mm, right. So the plant-based or the vegetarian food market here in the country is definitely growing. Now, as today is Pongnal, Mayabok Day once again, we're going to now focus on this new trend of meat-free poyangsik among our generation. So after the break, we're going to invite an expert in food science to our talks. So today we're joined by David Julia McClements, Distinguished Professor at the University of Massachusetts Department of Food Science. Welcome Professor McClements to the show. Yes, thank you very much for having me. It's great to be on your show. Lovely to have you. So our first question for you, Professor, is why is it important to have nutritious meals that are often called poyang here in Korea during the summertime? Yeah, I think there's some special uh, sort of nutritional needs during summer. I think because uh, it's so hot and humid, you tend to um, sweat a lot. So you lose a lot of moisture and a lot of electrolytes. So it's really important to replace those. Uh, and you also want to eat sort of quite light meals, because if you have heavy meals, you, you uh, generate a lot of heat when you're digesting the food. Mm -hmm. So, you know, eating a lot of salads and um, things like that is, is really good. You know, I think there's an ongoing sort of interesting debate back and forth between people who practice vegetarian diets and people who eat meat-based diet about whether they can offer the same level of nourishment. What is your point on that? And if possible, do you think a vegetarian diet can offer the same amount of nutrition and nutrition needs that a meat-based diet could? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. I think uh, that there's bad vegetarian diets and there's good variants vegetarian diets, just like there is for, you know, people who eat meat, you can have good diets or bad diets. So it's really, you know, like if you eat um, vegetables, you can uh, lose some uh, valuable vitamins and minerals and proteins and omega-3 fatty acids. So you do have to be a little bit more careful when you're having a vegetarian diet. Um, but I think you can do a, you can eat healthily. And that's a lot of my students and postdocs are working in that area, trying to make the next generation of uh, healthy plant-based foods. Mm -hmm. uh, so, professors, so with more people choosing to be a vegetarian or choosing a vegetarian diet these days, what are some of the summer healthy foods or summer health foods you would recommend us to keep us energized mm -hmm. uh, during this intense heat? Yeah, well, I think uh, it sounds like it's very hot and humid there. It's very nice and cool here, so um, <laughs> we're not going to do that. But uh, yeah, I think a lot of salads would be good. You know, things that have got a high moisture content and that are quite easy to digest. So things like, you know, watermelon, uh, sort of cucumbers, uh, d d different kinds of salads. And I was really interested to learn about all these uh, really unique foods that you have in Korea. I'd never heard of them before. Mm. Uh, but I do, you know, if you do eat spicy foods, it does cause you to sweat and that's the best way of cooling down. So I think that's really fascinating. And I think it's an area that we may have to do more research on in the future because of global warming. We, we might need these specialized foods that can help you stay cool. Mm. Well, Professor McClemens, I hope you get a chance to try out Korea's yes. uh, summer health food sometime <laughs> in the future. But thank you so much for your time today. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you very much for having me on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Right, so we're now going to expand our discussion. We're going to take a look at some of the summer health foods that are popular in other parts of the world. We also asked our viewers some of the popular summer health foods in their country. And here's what three of them said. User RD9BQ2HC90, a very long name, says our country is almost always hot, so there is no food exclusively eaten when it's hot, but there are a few foods to avoid when it's hot. Wesley Fortney BQ4QT says on a hot day, a salad of lettuce and vegetables with a couple of cold sandwiches which is great. In America, a cold drink is common. Lemonade, iced tea, beer, frozen cocktails. Other common cold dishes are egg salad, potato salad, tuna salad, fresh vegetables. Ice cream is always good, plus some fresh watermelon. Leon Tail 93 says Singaporeans tend to gravitate towards lighter and refreshing food options during hot and humid weather, for example, soup or broths or ice-based desserts such as tendor or ice kacang. For health food, Chinese herbal soups are popular, like for example, chinseng chicken soup. So we've taken a look at the various types of summer health foods in a lot of parts in the world. And besides what Professor McClemens and our viewers mentioned, I want to ask our panelists, are there any other vegetarian-based diets or summer health dishes that you'd like to try or something that you would like to recommend to our viewers? I actually did have a list and I have so many. Your list seems to be long. Well, I, have, I brought a list, <laughs> but when you read the comments, I think my list just grew. Oh, really? <laughs> but, but the wow. food they talked about, and I know it's not completely vegetarian, but man, that ice cream sounds so good right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I did a bit of research and there was a vegetarian version of samgyetang oh. and which is made with mushroom and so many packed nutrition with vegetable variations. So maybe that's a variation that I can still enjoy. Mm. Still have the herbal soup but with a uh, little bit of vegetarian twist. And in Korea we have something called satcharumsik mm. which is a Buddhist temple food. Right. And they use exclusively vegetables and they make so many great side dishes. They're seasoned perfection. And they serve such a great portion also and I saw some of the photos on Instagram and I actually might actually consider visiting a couple of these places because they literally made me salivate and I'm really happy just talking about them. <laughs> you really seem to be happy so yeah. if you visit one of these places please share how your experience was Absolutely here on News Den yes, for us and our viewers as mm -hmm. well. I'll share it in our group chat. <laughs> great <laughs> now Ki is yes. there any other dish are there any other dishes that you'd like to add on this long list already? <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, actually, I'm, 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 I'm more like a cook, you know, I cook a lot of food at home mm. and I'm more of a meat person, but uh, when I'm on a diet, as always, as a mm. summer, uh, <laughs> I had a lot of tofu because uh, tofu yeah. can be a really good right. uh, food for the meat. Yes. Uh, and they have a lot of different kinds of tofu. And uh, Cheska has actually mentioned kongguksu, the cold bean soup, mm -hmm. uh, but you can use this uh, dried uh, tofu noodle we uh, instead of an actual oh, uh, right, noodle right. and then you can use this for a lot of different sorts of pasta and the uh, dulke dubutang is one of oh, my wow. absolute favorite that's been curd pearly uh, seed soup mm -hmm. that's really great for you it's really filling um, you know uh, and it's really great for your health as well because it doesn't really have a meat in it mm -hmm. but it's really filling your stomach mm -hmm. and uh, you know is a great taste. Right, and mm. beans have a lot of proteins, right? Exactly. exactly. Mm, right. Yeah. I'm going to write all that down. less calories. Yeah. Oh, right, less yeah. calories, less so calories. very healthy. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and once again, um, before we wrap up, Korea's Boyangsik, or summer health food tradition, is all about enduring and overcoming the summer heat. Mm -hmm. So last but not least, do you guys have any tips that you'd like to share with our viewers to stay healthy and, if possible, cool throughout the rest of the summer? Because we have a long way to go. I know, and I'm still struggling. So if there were some tips, Tips that I actually did research, I should it should be applied to me. <laughs> um, but when I did the research for today, the pungna, the pok, mm. actually means you're literally collapsed. Mm. So what they meant when they said pungna traditionally means people were collapsed by the heat. So to get back up, a lot of traditional Korean medicine talk about the imp importance of preserving your energy mm -hmm. and immune system. And so far, mine has been about you know really loading up with vitamin C because mm -hmm. as important it is to sweat to um, take the heat out. When you sweat, a lot of your minerals and right. nutri nutrients gets released. So a lot of lemon water. And this was recommended in a lot of different uh, medical magazines. 
sleep. Oh. Mm. Because when it comes to summer, the first thing that gets disturbed is the sleep. Right, quality sleep. Yep, because we have the heat, and then even when you have the AC on, as we talked about, mm -hmm. you keep waking up mm -hmm. to turn it on, turn it off, and even the cold, you know, breeze doesn't really right. give you a good quality sleep. Mm -hmm. So for entire cycle, I think one of the things that I should do also is to make sure that I have quality sleep. Yeah. Mm, right. What about you, Ki? Well, uh, I'm more of a couch potato guy, so I'd rather play <laughs> video games at home with a nicely air conditioned room. But uh, <laughs> nowadays, what I do is at night when everything cools down just a little bit, when it's a bearable weather, mm -hmm. I go to Han River, Han oh, River Park, ah. and I play some basketball. Uh, when really you sweat good. out, uh, you feel refreshed, and you come home and you sleep well. And also, um, I sometimes play drums. You know, I have an electric drum set at home, mm. but there's a lot of um, drum studios where you can go to smash that stress out That's and relieve one. from mm. the heat. And, you know, you'll be having a lot of fun. Mm, right. So trying out your hobbies, working out, having quality sleep, mm -hmm. having a lot of supplements such as vitamin C, and also don't forget to have some summer health food to stay healthy during yep. this summer. Mm -hmm. And that's all from us today, but Newsden will be back on Friday at 9.30 in Korea time as tomorrow is National Liberation Day in Korea, a national holiday. Special thanks today to Cheska Dainha. Pleasure's always mine, thank you. And Ki Kim. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you on Friday. We are News, News Generation. Generation.